We've now finished up our first example, but you might have a couple of questions around the code that we just wrote out. So in this video, we're going to tackle a couple of different questions that you might have about all that code. So here's a list of the questions we're gonna go over right here. We're gonna first start off explaining exactly what that app function was inside of our app.js file. So I'm talking specifically about this function right here. You'll notice that at the bottom, we are returning what looked like HTML right there. So this whole app function is a little bit mysterious. Let's take a look at a couple diagrams and get a better understanding of what it is all about. Okay, so the app function we refer to as a React component. It is a React component because it is a plain JavaScript function that returns some JSX. Components in React have two jobs. First off, they produce JSX, which tells React what we want to show on the screen to the user. And components also handle user events, such as the user typing into a text input or clicking on a button. All components that we create are going to be functions that return JSX. JSX is that HTML looking stuff. You can really think of JSX as being a set of instructions to tell React exactly what content we want to show on the screen at any given time. So if we look at the JSX that we have over here, we were essentially trying to tell React that we wanted to show a div with some content inside of it. JSX looks very similar to HTML and follows many similar rules. So for each tag or each element as referred to it, we have a, either a closing element, as you see over here, or we have a self-closing tag, as in the case of the HR right here. A self-closing tag is one where we do not have a separate closing element like so. So what are these JSX elements all about? Well, quick follow-up diagram. So we make use of JSX elements to either tell React that we want to create a normal HTML element, such as a div or a span, an input, a table, or any other HTML element. We can also use JSX elements to tell React that we want to show another component. And we actually did that several times inside of our app component. We told, using J we told React using JSX that we wanted to show a field component, a translate component, and languages. That's what these things So here's the field element right here. Let's take a look at the definition for that field component. We can find the definition for it inside the components directory and then the field.js file. So we have another function over here that returns some JSX. So because back inside the app.js file, React saw a field component right here, React is going to call this function right here, get back this block of JSX, and then start to iterate over all the elements inside of here as well. So really quickly, let's walk through that process. So here is some of the JSX that was returned from the field component. React is going to walk through all this stuff as well. So it's gonna take a look at that opening div, say, is this a DOM element? Yes, okay, I'll show that on the screen. It then moves on to the label right there. Is this a DOM element? Yes, show it on the screen, and then onto the input. After React has covered or walked through all the JSX that is returned from the field component, it will then move on to the next element. So we'll take a look at languages. And once again, it will say, is this a React or something, is this a DOM element? Once again, no, it's not. So React is going to find the language
index.html file and parse all the HTML and script tags inside there. One of the script tags inside there is going to tell that little mini browser window to make another request and get some JavaScript files. In this case, a very special JavaScript file called a bundle.js file. This bundle.js file combines all the different JavaScript files that are present inside of our project. So it combines the index.js, app, field, languages, and translate all into one single JavaScript file. Code Sandbox then sends that entire bundle.js file back over to us. And then all the JavaScript inside there is executed. So the key thing to take away here is that we have a little mini browser window that makes a request, gets back an index.html file. The HTML file has a couple of script tags in it that cause the mini browser window to make a follow-up request and get a bunch of JavaScript and execute it. So where does that really leave us? What does that really mean? Well, let's take a look back inside this code editor really quickly. Back over here, I want you to take a look at the public directory. So that is the index.html file that gets loaded up over here on the right-hand side. So then we make that follow-up request to get some different JavaScript files. And when we get back all those JavaScript files, the first file that is executed automatically is the index.js file right here. So this is the file and all the code inside of it that initially boots up our React application and gets everything running from the get-go. The key line inside of here to really understand is this React DOM .render call. So let's kind of break down that line of code right there and really understand how React is starting up our project. Okay, another slightly complicated diagram, but don't worry, we will walk through it step by step. So on the right hand side is our index.js file, and there's the React DOM .render call, and I've split it up into a couple of different lines of code. The first argument to React DOM .render is a reference to our app component, or the app function. That little call right there, or by passing in that first argument, we're essentially telling React that we want it to call our app function and get back all the JSX we had written out inside there, and then eventually go through that process of turning it into HTML. The second argument to React DOM.render is a reference to where we want to show our React project inside of the index.html file. So here's some kind of generic HTML right here. Inside there is a div with an ID of root. And we can actually see that element if we go back over, go into that public directory, and find index.html. Once we have that file open, we can then scroll down a little bit. And right here is that div. So we are going to tell React to render our application or show all of our different components inside of that div right there. That is how our application first gets started up. We turn our app component into HTML and then tell React where we want all that HTML to be displayed. All right, just two more quick questions here. Inside that index.js file, we saw two different libraries. One was called React and the other was called React DOM. Why are there two libraries? Why isn't there just one? We're just here to sort of learn about React anyways, right? Well, yet again, let's take a look at a diagram. So whenever we work with React, we are actually working with two separate libraries. One is called React, the other is React DOM. The React library itself has a bunch of code inside of it that knows how to get a bunch of different components to work together, how to call a component function, how to get back that JSX, and how to essentially iterate over all those elements and decide whether to create some kind of HTML element or whether to call some other component function. We refer to the React library as a reconciler. That's the kind of technical term for it. The other library that we're going to work with is React DOM. This is a very specialized library that knows how to take a set of instructions on different elements that we need to create and actually create HTML out of it. So you can really imagine that React DOM is what takes all that JSX, turns it actually into HTML, and then puts all that HTML into the DOM and shows it to the user. Because React DOM is responsible for rendering content or showing content to a user, we refer to it as a renderer. All right, last question here. How about all that use state stuff that we saw inside of our app function? So inside of our app.js file, all this use state stuff right here. Okay, so use state, that is a function that we make use of to work with a system in React called the state system. The state system is all about managing data inside of your application. 
specifically data that is going to somehow change over time. Without going too deeply into the To essentially do our translation and then update the translation text right there. So we're trying to use the state system to update some content on the screen. All right, so that is a not so fast overview on a lot of the code that we just wrote out in that sample application. Everything that we discussed in this video is not stuff that you need to memorize just yet. We're going to go over all these different topics once again. This was just kind of a quick overview on some high level concepts. Let's take a pause right here. We're going to continue in the next video, and we're going to start to work on an even larger application. Should be a lot of fun, so I'll see you in just a minute.